That is the conclusion of our regular business session. There's no executive session. We do have some citizens wishing to speak. Amanda Bear uh, with Animal Welfare. Amanda, please come forward. Brower. Good evening. I'm here once again to report on animal welfare efforts in Paulding County. This month, I have equally exciting information. Last month, I told you about the 11 steps of no-kill and the no-kill equation and how they could benefit Paulding County. This month, I want to tell you about how some of the steps are already benefiting Paulding. I have the privilege of telling you that in the month of January 2013, 82% of the animals that were processed through animal control survived the month, while 18% of them were sadly killed. That is the lowest percentage since May of 2010. And it is a decrease from December's 23% that we were so excited about last month. There were 99 adoptions in January of 2013. Um, excuse me. There were 99 adoptions in January of 2013, which is 25 more than January of 2012, 14 more than January 2011, and 27 more than January 2010. What does this mean and how do we interpret this information? First, this tells us that the new shelter hours were a huge blessing to the animals. Next, we know that 99 adoptions brought in 99 adoption fees. Even if 50% of those took place on Save a Life Tuesday, the adoption fees alone would have brought in at least $3,000. The cost avoidance and maintaining and then killing and disposing of those pets would have also improved the shelter's financial status substantially. Additionally, it has been estimated that on average, Americans spend approximately $1,696 per dog and $1,105 per cat annually. Those 99 adoptions break out the 75 canines and 24 felines, which should indicate an approximate $153,720 spent on those pets in the next year. The year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that. So the next thing we understand is that live pet pets bring in continuous revenue. Now I'm going to tell you about a wonderful thing that happened this month. The volunteers and supporters have been striving to take regular and beautiful pictures of the pets that are for adoption. These pictures are then posted on social media for the public to see. The public is kept up to date with who is adopted, still available, and sadly in danger. The shelter has Save Alive Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays are closed for the euthanasia. On Tuesday afternoon, in the afternoon about 4 o'clock, it was learned that <coughs> one of the volunteers that there was one dog left tagged to go down on Wednesday. Word was sent out on social media that this boy was there and that he had a tag to go down on Wednesday. It was advised that there were three hours until the shelter would close, so that if anyone was interested in adopting, time was of the essence. His picture had been loaded the weekend before. This was handsome guy here. Um, and so everyone could see it and know who it was and share it. We were calling him Dapper Dan at the time because of his picture. Um, immediately, posts started pouring in that people were sharing the picture and telling their customers about it and talking husbands into adoption. One lady said she was leaving with her child on the way to the shelter. Another said, if she's not there in 15 minutes, let me know. It's going to take me 40 minutes to get there. But another had seen the post and left her house in a hurry without posting her intent. The dog was on his way home in under two hours. The second lady arrived to find him gone. And the third posted that she had really wanted him. Um, his new name is Lucky. And this is a beautiful ending for an otherwise ill-fated dog. And what this tells us is that the pets aren't unwanted, they're unknown. At least three families wanted this dog that was tagged to be killed the next day. Without the pictures and the posts that the volunteers and supporters shared, he would have died in the shelter. Now he's happy and safe in his new home, and his family is further contributing to the Paulding economy. This further leads us to understand the huge impact and value of the volunteers and supporters using the media to reach out to the community so that they can see these pets and know that they're there. The last few months have proven over and over again that Paulding citizens care what happens to these homeless pets. They want to see them, they want to help them, and know that they're safe and happy. Every week, pictures are posted to Facebook that the pets that are for adoption and of the happy families that adopt them. And this has been a huge success. These followers share the pictures on their own pages, they tell their friends and family, and their workers, and their co-workers, and they wait with bated breath every Wednesday to know whether or not we have another week without space killing in the shelter of healthy and treatable pets. And the number of followers grows daily. In December, No Kill Falding organized an event at the Tractor Supply and invited the shelter of animals out for adoptions. We were so glad when they came. 
And despite the fact that it poured rain the entire day, the people came out via five adoptions and lots of food donations came into the shelter. Just imagine what a better publicized event with decent weather could yield and if we could have these every month or more. When the shelter comes out to the community to have off-site adoptions, people come out to see the pets. Regular off-site adoptions are desperately needed and desired. This tells us that Paulding County citizens care very much about these homeless pets and that this cause will have to continue until all healthy and treatable pets are safe. We're now 12 weeks without space killing in Paulding. Um, I want to be clear that does not mean feral cats. It doesn't mean pets that are deemed unadoptable for one reason or another. It means no pets were killed for lack of space. That's unprecedented, just so you all know. But we all understand that spring and summer are coming, and without greater and greater actions, this streak will not survive puppy and kitten season. Um, this is why we're here to remind everyone that all 11 steps of no-kill are fully necessary. All 11 steps are fully necessary um, to achieve the 95% save rate that we all know that we can achieve. And just imagine what could be. You know, this is just what a few volunteers and a little publicity has done to the adoption rate. Just imagine what could be accomplished if the entire county, citizens and leadership, worked together to fully implement each and every step programmatically. 95% is more than a You know, if we had 82% in January, 95% is just a few more steps. But we need your full support in implementing no kill and holding right away. This includes trap neuter return to protect and humanely reduce our community cats and curb kitten season. Uh, fair cats are still killed in the shelter. This also includes off-site adoptions and cooperatively working with volunteers, rescues, and the community. Amanda? Yes. Thank you, John. Thank you. Amanda can say more in five minutes than I can say in two weeks. <laughs> I had one more paragraph. Is there sure? <laughs> yeah, one more paragraph. Okay, so our final conclusion is that we must take action quickly. These pets and these citizens are counting on us. It is our hope that these conclusions and numbers give you an easy choice in implementing the no-kill equation embracing it fully. It's a reality we need you to share and fight we want you to join. <laughs> Thank you. Now that you, your five minutes is up, I've got a couple questions. Thank you. And, uh, I appreciate you being here. After you all spoke for it, spoke last month, uh, I went home and, and talked to my family, some about it, and neighbors, and some other constituents in District 1. And one of the things that came up um, was if you implement all 11 steps, how can you possibly do it more economically than just traditional kill methods. Well, in most cases, spay neuter will cost less than traditional, than traditional methods. Um, if cat neuter return has proven to reduce the cat population. So currently, we're bringing all these cats in. We're bringing the kittens in with kitten season. The majority of kittens come from community cats and feral cats. We're going to reduce the population through methods. And then we're also going to do aggressive adoptions. Aggressive adoptions turn these animals faster, and it brings in money. Killing is just a cost. It just costs money. It costs money to keep them until we put them down. It costs money to put them down. You know, the vet comes in and does that. There's chemicals involved in doing it. There's disposal involved. It's just a cost of money. And adoption is a return. You get an adoption fee, and then money comes into the community every single week, every month, you know. Mm -hmm. This is a cost benefit. It, it's not something, you know, it's an investment into the community. Um, if you work with foster homes, that cuts the cost of the shelter because you don't have shelter workers having to feed and care for these animals. You don't have as much of a risk of sickness because shelters are going to be like elementary schools. I mean, you got when you have a bunch in one place, it's just like you know your kids at school that get sick. Um, you have less of that, so you have less cost involved with it. You know, foster it is a way to vastly increase the shelter capacity and at minimal cost. Um, if you're so you're going to be having the fosters bring these animals out to adoption events and they're healthy, they're happy because they're in homes and they're not in the kennel. They're getting the enrichment and the personal involvement that they need to be more adoptable, and they're going to move faster. And so it, it involves the community because they can be a part of this. They can help these animals move forward, and it's an investment into the community. Um, you, you have your cost cut when you're spending to, to invest to reduce future income intake, and then you have them in the homes, and so they're not taking up so much space and cost of the shelter, and then they're not having a cost to be put down. Thank you. One more, the, the spreadsheet that you handed out to the commissioners uh, for 2010 through 2013 shows that from November of last year, 45% kill, December 23% kill, and January 18% kill. So uh, there was an increase in adoptions and therefore a decrease in dogs and cats that had to be, had to be killed. Can you just restate or clarify um, what happened to, to make that better? The citizens are seeing the animals and they're getting to know who's there. 
I don't think a lot of people understood how many animals were coming in, how many were not making it out. Um, and it's different when you see a face. I mean, we all saw Lucky now, and it's different when you see the face. That dog was going to be killed the next day. You know, his, the tag was on his cage. And it's, it's different. And when the people are getting to see it, you know, and they're seeing it on social media, and they're sending it around to all their friends, and they're, you know, coming into the shelter now, which more so because of these better hours, so that's good. And because we're, you know, they're seeing the pictures of the pets and they're coming in, and seeing it makes a difference. You know, um, opening up to the community and working with the community is going to make all the difference. Nate came over here from Hooters? I did. I came over here from Hooters. So it is a fundraiser. Who came up with Hooters News? Well, it's actually, it's not just Paulding that's doing it today. Um, Hooters does this around the metro Atlanta area, but um, they have invited us to be there to do a fundraiser for the Spain Hooters program. And Paul, then, um, we've been working to raise money for spay neuter over um, at the spay neuter clinic, and that way, when people adopt pets from the shelter, they can take their um, adoption paperwork over to the shelter. And as long as we've got money raised, um, pay a ten dollar copay, get their pets given here, get the rabies shot, so their paperwork is complete. Well, thank you and so many others for volunteering. I've been exposed to volunteers and, and family connection, and keep Paul beautiful and <coughs> and uh, animal control. I think Chuck would agree with me. It's, it's awesome to have such a wonderful group of volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Now we have Deborah Singletary. Do you think you can cram that much information in five minutes? I'm not, I'm not going to talk that much. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to what? I'm not going to talk that much. <laughs> or I'm going to try not anyway. Well, good evening. Thank you for allowing me to be here again this month. Um, I come to you tonight to talk about Pauling County and what's happening at the shelter. I feel like the Pauling County residents need to know exactly what's going on, and it's nothing short of phenomenal. Pauling County residents, along with volunteers, area rescues, and sponsors, have banded together as one and are sweeping the eastern part of the United States with nothing short of a miracle. Through social media, we have begun to reach an excess of 37,000 people, and the response is uh, being received through and reflected through those numbers. So what I'd like to do is tell you a couple of stories. By networking continuously, whether it be by phone or internet, or in person, we have reached areas as far north as Pennsylvania, as far south as Florida, all the way to the east coast of Virginia Beach, and even as far west as Washington State. We had a pet at the shelter two weeks ago, a hound that was so emaciated you could count his ribs. He was in very, very poor shape. By reaching out, we had a sponsor in Newcastle, Pennsylvania that actually literally paid an area rescue $250 to get that baby out of the shelter. And by the way, he was scheduled to be put down the very next morning. And I like, I'm happy to say that he is actually living, living on a five-acre farm here in Georgia right now, so he's doing well. His new name is Indigo, so he was saved. Another story is we had a cat there named Maddie who had been at the shelter far too long. She was starting to get depressed, which makes, um, it definitely doesn't help as far as adoptability goes, because they get to where they recess back into the, the kennels and you can't pet them or have anything to do with them. Well, we were really concerned, and a local family saw her and they wanted to help, but they were not in a position to actually adopt her. But what they did do was they took and they sponsored another $250 to a local rescue to pull her out of the shelter. And um, again, this cat, Maddie, was set to be euthanized the very next morning. Well, I'm happy to say, once again, this cat has actually went on and is in a very good environment and doing very well. There's another cat. His name was Ivan. Ivan was in very poor condition. He had some medical issues. Again, another one that was set to be euthanized the very next morning. With the help of some team members, we had one of our team members actually stepped up and said she would foster. We pulled the cat, the cat and what she did was she fostered him took him to the vet and found out that he had more medical issues than the obvious ones, which were he had ear mites, he had some infections, but he also tested FIV positive, which is the equivalent to HIV, which means his immune system is very low. And so you have to be careful. There are no areas here set up for cats like that. So Mandy diligently started searching, and we found a sanctuary that handles and specializes in nothing but FIV positive cats, and it was in Virginia. So we worked with Noonan and Coweta counties put a transport together, and now Ivan is healthy and living in Virginia on, on the sanctuary and doing well. The reason I'm telling you or I'm sharing these stories is because residents have come forward to help and support in many ways. 
showing loud and clear Pauline's love for pets and desire to see them happy and safe. But not only that, we are actually generating reven revenue now into this county from as far away as 800 miles. Plus, other counties are complimenting us on our efforts from as far away as Pennsylvania, Virginia, and right here in Georgia in Blue Ridge. We've had some questions, um, some, <coughs> some emails and things like that saying, what are you doing? We want to do what you're doing. So eyes are on Pauline. People are excited about our progress, and we're waiting to see what's going to happen next. Let's keep working together, making Pauline County not only the model shelter and show that we love these pets and we care about these pets here in Georgia, but across the nation. And I wanted to also say in conclusion what Mandy wasn't aware of yet is as of tonight, we are at week 13 of no space killing in that shelter, which has never been heard of. So we went over three months of no space killing in that shelter whatsoever. So, but um, I want to thank you again for listening. And um, you mentioned Hooters for Neuters. And I know you met with our good friend Larry Jernigan earlier. So I have a gift for all of you. It's a Hooters for Neuters t-shirt. So that'll show your support. Thank you. But I want to thank you again. Thank you, Rick. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank all the volunteers. Uh, this is incredible what you've done. Warms my heart. I, I've asked Dave Carmichael to help oversee um, as a post commissioner uh, the duties of the animal shelter, so you'll see him work closely with that among the other things that we do uh, together. Uh, I can't thank you enough, and uh, thank you again to the Cubs Caps for being here. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? You want me to make a challenge? Oh, I'm sorry. You, you did ask me that. Uh, Dave Carmichael is one of the challenges this board. Uh, certainly. Uh, on my first opportunity for the quarterly Channel 23 and Pony.gov, I put out a challenge to the other districts. Uh, I think we all like sports. I know a lot of people up here coaching and played, and I've had that opportunity. Um, so I was putting out a challenge to the other districts in bowling, tennis, volleyball, pistol shooting, in three-man basketball. And I'm gonna provide the trophy in the district that comes out ahead. We'll get the trophy and have bragging rights for you. Basketball. <laughs> <laughs> if you just get me the names, uh, I'll, I'll work with, uh, I'll do it on my own or whatever it takes for us to put together this competition. And by Memorial Day, we'll award a trophy. I'm pretty sure District will come out here. Right? Sounds like great fun. And uh, Dave, thank you for that. One thank more you. thing. I'm going to ask the Boy Scouts. I'm sure y'all will be watching, um, was it next Monday? Are you tough as a Boy Scout? Yes. Yeah, I see that. So uh, it should be interesting. Fantastic. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all for being here. Thank you. 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 Thank you.